Hello everyone, this is Jeremiah Harrison and Michaela Harrison here today on this Saturday, the 19th of June. Mm -hmm. Boy, it's weird. This is our second video without our calendars. And, you know, just as we were sitting down to make this video, Michaela and I started a conversation because I realized that the calendars, the illustrated calendars we, we've been making have been kind of, they've been such a centering thing because everything's there as far as the imagery, the, you know, so a big a part of our videos is just talking about what went into the calendars because, you know, Michaela naturally, she's been reading and thinking and many things she's selecting and arranging together in like a bouquet. Yeah, that's really what the calendars are like, a, a illustration bouquet to go through the liturgical year. Mm -hmm. We're in this time now, of course, many of you know we're, we're working on getting published, so Michaela's actually, her mind's in Advent. You know, she's already begun the layout and design for Advent. Well, it's, it's the middle of the summer. It's, you know, it's, what's, you know. was it, was it that, that, that movie or whatever, that idea of Christmas in July or something? Yes, I know So she has that, and so you, some of you may have noticed our last video, it was kind of, wasn't as good as some of our earlier videos, and mm -hmm. so we've, I've been having to rethink, okay, you know, our goal is to try to put together one of these videos every week, but what are we really after? Mm -hmm. Well, we're after the same thing we've always been after, which is to try to help make the liturgy more real, more present, uh, help people remember the liturgy, the mm -hmm. liturgy of the year. Where are we? What's coming up this week and why? Why is it important? And our primary vehicle is through art. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've built this membership because we're collecting resources, but we're also creating resources. Mm -hmm. So, the, you know, the calendars is that first major piece of creation. But as we go on, we really want this membership to grow. To, we want to be able to have other resources that people can use to help celebrate the liturgy besides just the calendar. And so basically with this video, we want to get some feedback from you. You know, because we have no calendars to offer right now, mm -hmm. one could say we could not continue these weekly videos, you know. Um, I still feel it, and, and if we do continue the weekly videos, the point really should be to spend a few minutes talking about each of the saints, what's coming up that week, because that, that's what we did with the calendars. Mm -hmm. We just, we had that, you know, really neat calendar to look at while talking, so I think it just, it like made everything flow better, just having it. Well, besides the feast days, there was so much going on in the liturgy surrounding each season and entering into that season, whereas in this time after Pentecost, it's a lot more open. It's a bit different. It's a very different um, feel. So it is a little more focused on, on the saints, you could say, but then obviously the Sunday gospel kind right, of helps right. to direct the the faithful during the week and what we're focusing on a bit. Yeah, right, right. So, so we can continue doing that. The other thing we've noticed is, you know, we've been showing the imagery that we would, and Michaela would find that, that becomes the imagery to help inspire the calendars. And I realized that, you know, Michaela has found and collated all these images together, but you guys only get to see them for, you know, a few mm -hmm. seconds on the screen as we go through our slideshow. And it struck me today, you know, I think our people would like to have, to like to have those images, you know. At um, least access them. We don't have rights over them. Right. And that's, that's a little tricky, but at least if I could share it's where nothing we I could got sell. them from. Right, but if we could, uh, so, you know, I'm trying, we're trying also to keep a weekly email going out, and lately the email really has just been informing uh, that the videos come out, and I think we really should turn our attentions to make the email a little more useful to people. So one of the ideas we have here is that we would actually include links to all the images that... Um, Michaela has has for source imagery so you guys could have access to the same images we do online mm -hmm. and you guys can do uh, whatever you like um, and of course the images that we're creating the coloring pages the stories all of that would still be behind the membership but and I, I kind of and the monthly dedication and the monthly dedication that that's was, a big part of the membership I think sometimes people forgot they're like oh it's just coloring pages and a story but really the monthly dedication is a big part because it's with the family ideally on display during that whole month and helps to serve as a good reminder. Right. So right. As, a, as, a re as a reiteration, the membership we still have going right now while we don't have the calendars available, it includes color, the coloring pages of all the saints of that week, mm -hmm. one story, because we're only able to make one story, and an audio, a reading of that story. Of course, you don't have to use the audio. You could still read it, to, read it yourself to the kids. Um, and then the monthly dedications, which, of course, they themselves include an image and a hymn. And everything is illustrated with borders and that sort of thing. And, and, and the chant that goes, the audio, right, the audio of the chant. How to sing the chant, right? Mm -hmm. An example of how to sing. All of that is what we're offering in our basic membership package while we prepare to publish the calendar. And our hope is to grow this thing, to be able to, mm -hmm. in time, 
add some more content. Like I know one piece that we want to add when we can is recipes, different mm -hmm. recipes that would go good for certain saints' feast days and such. And that would be mm -hmm. something we would uh, research or even we would invite. I mean, some of you guys who are watching this might want to contribute. That's the other piece, the other piece of where we want to go with this membership is we really want we want to get other people contributing because the goal here is to try to make the liturgy you know celebrate the liturgy in the home make it great again as i like to say with so many other things so we need there will need to be other collaborators other folks who help uh, steer us in the right direction to find some of this content so okay so yeah, with we should also give an update on the publishing we're still moving forward. we're still yeah there's no updates in the moment i'm still talking with uh still talking with the publishers um I expect to have an answer. I think we'll have a final answer within a week or two. I think we're, we're really there. close. It's we're going. Close. It's going well. So we just we've been taking care of a lot of things around the house. <laughs> <laughs> Although we have been work. Advent is coming along. We've we've got the basic design and Jeremiah's uh, been working on. I'm getting to do a little drawing this time he's too. He's working on the frame and that at least the, the the template's all finished for me, so I can begin getting in there and drawing. And it looks really nice. It's going to be so much cleaner. Right. Than last one was. So, so to be clear, uh, we want give us some feedback. Send me an email, or even just put a comment in the uh, the YouTube comment or the Instagram mm -hmm. comment wherever you're watching this. As to if you like the weekly video so far, do you want to see us continue them, where we uh, give a slideshow of the images and uh, mm -hmm. talk a little bit about the saints, or do you think it'd be better if we just went ahead and sent that same content out on an email? Mm -hmm. And uh, I know in our videos we don't talk a lot about the saints. There's really Dom Guéranger has so much more to say, and he says it more beautifully than I could. Um, and I know we tried a few weeks ago where I literally just read from Dom Guéranger, but um, no, neither of us really liked it. I feel like that was, that was quite the right yeah. content for the video. So, Although I did get some feedback. Some folks, they did, they did like that. So Okay, well, let us um, know. Maybe we're wrong, and maybe it's okay if we read, but it just seemed like maybe it was a little... Not well, as, uh, the other piece is, is maybe folks really would like to, to hear me reading it, but I could break that into its own small video separately, and I could read, and then we could you know reference those in the membership, um, kind of like the audio reading of the stories. That's true. So, all right, anyhow, that's our, our little beginning bit <laughs> yeah. for this video. Please, we'd love your feedback. And so, but this, I think you're going to like this week. This week, uh, Michaela, you, she has a lot of images to go through this week. Yes. Um, and I'm, I'm going to go ahead and take us over to... Let's go see what we got here. Now this, so we're beginning the week is for tomorrow, which mm -hmm. is the uh, fourth fourth Sunday, fourth Sunday Pentecost. after Pentecost. Mm -hmm. And this is, uh, th what, I'm going to share something really interesting that I read from Dom Gerozé as he as he gives the intro. Believe it or not, so the image you see here comes from the gospel of that of that Sunday. This used to be the gospel of the fifth Sunday after Pentecost. So oh, I don't I don't I didn't get exactly what time period. But like in the 15th, 1500s perhaps, the gospel of the fourth Sunday was moved to the first Sunday of Pentecost. And all of the other gospels shifted down. So the gospel of the fifth then became the fourth. And then the gospel of the sixth then became the fifth. But none of the other readings of the liturgy shifted. Only the gospels. Or prayers. The right. Readings. So now the prayers, they all stayed the same. So mm -hmm. it was interesting because... Because of this change, the liturgists of the 11th and 12th and 13th century, the, the, the connections that they, they thought they might have seen or may have selected, all of those were sort of broken by this movement. Um, as, you know, Maybe as, there's new connections to be made, right? Right, right. <laughs> but uh, I, I, that was an interesting point that Dom Guerger talks about. But in another, he also brings it another end. On the Greek, the Greek church of the East, uh, they don't have this sort of connection between the different readings of the liturgy that we do in the West. So they really, they're, after Pentecost, their liturgy just go, marches right through the Gospels. So right after Pentecost, they would begin in Matthew, and then every single Sunday they would read the next section of, of Matthew, and they would just mm -hmm. march all the way through until, what did he say, the Feast of the Exaltation of the Holy Cross in September. Mm -hmm. So just a little bit of interesting trivia history, and also gives you the, gives you the idea that this liturgy is... Uh, it's a growing, it's living It's a growing, thing. yeah. And so many different persons at different times have come to it and have sort of placed their imprint on it. It's, it's not like it's handed down fully complete from God. All the connections are already there for us to... There, there actually are shifts and changes. 
And of course, I mean, I guess we know that because in our day, we've seen a huge, massive yeah. shift. I think and change. that's what makes it so obviously different from all the little changes that were done, where there was just little tweaks and moving little things around. Whereas, in more recent times, it we all know like about a, it was yeah. like it was like a. <laughs> Just like cut this and move it over there, and it it was it was really disruptive too. At least I say I think if you if you look at the art, you know, as you see like the art on this being displayed here, if you look at the art that was produced with the old liturgy versus the art that's been produced with the new liturgy, it looks like a very dramatic change. But uh, anyhow, there's lots of other influences on the art, but right, that's part of right. the reason why I really care about beautiful art, and um, I would love to help make that more available to. So we uh, this this week I'm going to definitely try to do it where I will uh, have a way where you can get to the images that you see on this video. Okay. So we'll put that in there. But but so it, what was it? So this the I want to get to the fourth Sunday of Advent because what is the gospel here? It is, is the, gospel? the gospel of Christ when he calls Peter or sorry calls Simon, um, and he tells Simon to cast out his net and he says, Well, Lord, we've been fishing all night and caught nothing. And then they catch a ton of fish, and then right. he gets on his knees, and he says, Depart from me, Lord, for I am him. a sinful man. So you can see Peter here. There he you is. See. I mean, that gesture. As he realizes, yes, as he realizes yeah. what has just happened. Hmm. So, but there you have um, his brother, um, Brother Andrew, behind him in the boat with him. And then in the other boat, you have the two sons of, of Zebedee. Um, Pulling the fishes out. Pulling the fishes, they're all, all pulling them up. So I just think this is a beautiful image. I'm, I'm guessing this is a Renaissance time period. Mm. But just the, the posturing is, is just so lovely. So anyway. Yeah, beautiful. All right, that's for tomorrow. Yep. The fourth Sunday after Pentecost, and then we move into the week. Yep. And we have... St. Aloysius, Gonzaga. Feast on Monday, I presume. Yep. Yep. This is a really neat picture, too. These are all different scenes from his life. St. Aloysius, um, he is known for his great purity. He came from a noble family um, and um, left left all that to... Um, he was with the... the um, he entered religious life, but he died fairly young. And one of the things that I thought would be particularly interesting um, is that he actually died serving during a pandemic he was taking wow. care of the sick and the poor and and he um wasn't afraid um he i guess he did confess that he was repulsed but he he really wanted to overcome that and offer it to god and he was even um he was told that he was the the, the time the time of his death and um he said he would die on the octave of Corpus Christi, the octave day of Corpus Christi. Um, so these are little scenes from his life. Um, I just, I thought, I love this composition. It was so beautiful. Um, we have a few other pictures of him as well. I wish I could, I could talk more about each of the scenes, but I can't. Um, here's another, here's an image of him with um, the children pointing to the Sacred Heart, St. Luigi, Gonzaga, <laughs> an Italian. And he's Italian, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just beautiful. Look at that art. It's a pen and ink, or it's an engraving. Okay. This one. I wish I had a higher resolution, but just the right. artist that composes, it's such a sweet, contemplative image. Um, it's just lovely. Supposed to capture something of what it's like to, to really love prayer. Something that. Uh, something that we all need to really learn in our day, our day of noise, our day of, our modern day, seems seems like our modern day is just incapable of prayer. At least as I, as you see, depicted in the lives of the saints. But I guess being near the monks as we are kind of shows well we have to, we have to rediscover that again. You know. You see the lilies there? Hmm. That's a symbol of his purity. And then he's on leaning into the word of God. And then you have the crucifix right above. Many images he's also shown holding the skull. I think that's the skull represents death and his preparation. So here is a statue. This is what we decided to use for the composition of the coloring page. And there you have the demon 
and the child a little afraid, but him holding the lilies and the peaceful gesture of protection. And that's the page. And look of peace. It's on such his face. a yeah, it is. It is such. Okay, so he was Jesuit. I was trying to remember for okay, sure. He is right. con- confessor of the Society Good. of Jesus. Good. Saint Aloysius Gonzaga, pray for us. Yeah. Now we have our next day. Saint Paulinus of Nola, and um, he was a, a bishop. Um, interestingly enough, he he was married. Um, and it was after his wife had pa- passed away that he became um, bishop. Um, it was actually, I believe, due to his wife that he converted um, to Christianity and was baptized. Um, they had a, a child, one child, and um, the child died, I think, eight days after after its birth. I think it was, it was a boy, oh. his birth. And it was after that that he and his wife both started to live a various ascetic lifestyle and I think that all that led so the pain the suffering really God used it um so he's he's credited with having introduced bells into the liturgy he's back in the you know 350 300s early early early, early. um and so he's credited with introducing bells into the liturgy so um the bells at mass are oftentimes called nola bells after saint paulinus of nola um i put in these little like bell-shaped flowers um to kind of symbolize that um and also i was reading that uh, on his feast they have um it's called the feast of the lilies so i think there's there's probably some sorry yeah the feast of the lilies um did i get that right i think so um so i have some pictures um some other other pictures of him that show him with um, with the bell, holding a bell, but then also a legend about him. Why don't you go to the next one? This, uh, okay, there's a picture of him, but then you see the bell, a little bell off in the corner there. Um, St. Paulino. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm doing image, image searches and I can't find an image I want, I go look up the name in another language, and the, uh, this, the, this was the Italian version of his name, and I was able There's to a, find. And he has a big bell now. Yes. Yes, he, yeah, bell. This is, he, he says, I introduced bells to liturgy. <laughs> 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 Not just little ones, big ones. All right, next one. Wonderful, all right. Oh, wait. And now we come. Oh, I lost my picture. Oh, there was supposed to be another one, four. All right, okay. No, well, that's it. It didn't make it in? No, it didn't make it in this time. Okay, well, Never. I'll just tell the story really quick. I had a picture of of um, him uh, with um, with a boy that he was releasing from uh, from bondage. Um, oh, should we let her let her just come? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. See if you can catch her for a minute. We'll let her let her come in. Help! Help! What do you help, want to help with? Help! I should probably help her. Okay. Part of the interruption. We we have we got her situated. Hopefully for. <laughs> A long enough time. <laughs> so, <laughs> you, you had a story you're going to tell us of Saint pa- Saint was it Paulino Paulinus mm-hmm. and a boy. He so what happened was he was when he was a bishop. Um, there was a time when there was a lot of raids happening and people were being kidnapped and taken hostage over to probably Africa. I'm actually not sure where. And the a widow came to him and, and begged him and said, "My son has been taken as a slave." But he said, I've already given all my money to, to ransom hostages, so I'll give what I have. And he himself went to where the boy was and exchanged the chains and said, please take me instead. So the boy was released, or the young man was released to his mother, and he served as the gardener for some time period. And at some point, um, whoever the, the, the owner was, realized that he was the bishop and ended up releasing him. So he, he didn't know that, that it was a bishop that was serving as his gardener. So it's a legend. I guess it has been contested, but I think it illustrates the point that he really was a caring shepherd over his flock and was willing to go to great lengths um, to care for them during that time period. Interesting. Interesting. A good, a good shepherd. Now. Okay, so... Okay, so now we're jumping to... So we ah, have, Vigil. This is the Vigil so of John this, the, the Baptist. The Vigil of John the Baptist. Be like, the, show you the image and you guess. What's this What's this about? I, well, that's, that's, Zechari- that's uh, Zacharias that's and the right. angel. The angel Gabriel. 
Um, so this is the um, this is the story that my sister Kateri chose to 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 feature, and so she um, went through Butler's Lives of the Saints and then kind of reworked it, uh, um, and she focuses the story primarily on the on the early part of John the Baptist's life. Um, otherwise, it would just be so long. So I've compiled several images that kind of go along with the first part of his life. The, here beginning with with Zechariah and the angel um, who tells him that his wife is going to conceive even though she's been uh, considered barren and he um, he asks for a sign and he gets struck dumb yeah <laughs> well so. he, he disbelieved at first right he didn't have he you, you I guess you really could contrast the, the angel Gabriel visited two persons and right. they both responded a bit differently yes one with uh not ready belief and the other with ready be it done unto me according to thy word yep so, so ah, here you have. have the visitation i just i love that this well there's several images of the visitation it's a very popular um thing in art and um, but this one's just so peaceful and uh, the symmetry of it's just lovely, and the execution of it, and the line work is lovely. Oh no, our phone. Another <laughs> <laughs> phone. Okay, we don't normally leave our phone on when we're trying to make a recording, right? But we have family coming in, so we knew they might be calling, and we knew they might call during our recording. But well, we had to, you know, we had to make our video anyway. But anyhow, <laughs> we got it all sorted out, and you, and we're going through the images of. Uh, this is the next image that you yes. have to show us of the visitation. And Elizabeth I, uh, looks pretty, pretty happy. Yes, that's why I, this is a really sweet image. Um, it's just so joyful, and uh, and it's still it's still just such a lovely piece. The artist just was knew his or her craft. I actually don't know, um, but and even the look look on our lady's face is so sweet. So, yeah. now this next one is one of your favorite artists. This is by mm -hmm. yes, Braddy Barth. Um, She's more contemporary, but um, a lot of her images I really like. Not all of them, but um, they're they're very um, they pull a lot from the medieval as far as the composition and there's a certain stillness that mm. I think is very conducive to contemplation. Um, and here you have the two little ones uh, mystically being presented where we can see them. So it's not meant to be a realistic image, but it is I think for children. Um, useful to kind of I like, see it in this way. I like if you look carefully, you see the little John, his eyes are open and he's looking towards our Lord. See and, that? And Jesus' eyes are, are, are closed, right? Right, or they're down. They look, they look, yes. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah. Oh, by mm -hmm. the way, I want to point out the feast of the visitation is coming up on July 2nd. Okay. So I thought maybe I shouldn't show these images now, but they are part of the life of John the Baptist. Right. They're in the story, right. and there's so many images of the visitation. I'm sure I can come up with more. We're, we'll have these. We'll probably have some of these and more come uh, come that feast day. Okay, so working yeah. through chronologically. So now here we are. This is the nativity of John the Baptist. Here you have um, Elizabeth there uh, in her bed. You have... Her husband Zachariah writing down the name of John. His name shall be John, and then that's our blessed mother holding, holding John the Baptist. And you could tell it's her because of the the halo. Her halo is that that disc there over her head, and then you have Elizabeth oh, and this. John. Yep. Oh. Versus Elizabeth. For some reason, oh, I thought I could actually be wrong. <laughs> is that in her hand or is that her head? Well, no. I think that's in her hand. Is it in her yeah, hand? Yeah, because look, it's not quite centered over. Well, then I could be okay. wrong. Uh, yeah, yes. we, uh, very good. We have, but, you see, but I see what you're talking about, though. You see the halo, like, upon his head. and so. Oh, I guess, man, you shattered that for me. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> John, in, in all the medieval images, John, at the, the nativity of John the Baptist, there, it's often shown with, with nurses holding the baby. Um. Our Lady would have been present, but it's not usually a lot of times not in the picture. So I thought, okay. oh, this is this in the picture, but oh well. Oops. Even Oops. I mess up sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next one. All right, I have uh, this image, and there's another image of of uh, Jesus and John the Baptist as, as children. So here you have the Lamb. There's uh, John the Baptist. He's has he's the one on the right. He's, he's holding the standard, and then he's got the 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 dark brown. Um, 
uh, clothing. And mm-hmm. the next one, I believe, okay, yeah, actually, I guess I have two more. Um, so here you have Elizabeth holding the Christ child and Our Lady there, and then St. John the Baptist is off to the side. Right here. All right. And then the next one, so this is Leonardo da Vinci, actually. Hmm. And here you have the Blessed Mother and um, St. Elizabeth and John the Baptist. Do you know, did he do it intentionally like this, where it's un- in- incomplete? It's probably one of his sketches. He's probably preparing for a bigger piece. Hmm. So a lot of times they find the sketches and then save them because they're interesting to look at. And now we proceed on to the coloring page that the, the girls have made for. So we began talking on the vigil. So we just inept, just moved right into the feast day itself. Of right. The feast of St. John the Baptist. So there he is, full full grown. Hmm. I don't think I have the original we don't source have, image. Yeah, this not for this one. You didn't include it in the slides. So we should have had it, though. I know I've seen it. Oops. Oh, well. So we, we're still making the... Uh, Okay. Next we have, we proceed down to... St. William. Abbot. St. William the Abbot. Um, He's shown here uh, with a wolf. The legend is that uh, a wolf came and killed the donkey that was doing work for in in his um, garden or whatever it was. Whatever work. I think think he was pulling a plow or whatever. And William came and uh, reprimanded the wolf and says, well, now you've killed the donkey. Now you must do all the work that the donkey did. Um, so he harnessed the wolf, and the wolf stayed with it and was very docile. And people were amazed that I bet, a wolf I bet the wolf was, regretted because they don't know how the wolf is as suited to the, uh, to the work as the donkey was. Yeah, probably not. Anyway. Well, I think do makes another sense, picture though. of St. William. Yeah, yeah there's one, one more. Um, this is... Oh, the there it is. There's the wolf. Being yoked. Harnessed for labor. <laughs> There's St. William. Here, I can get in. I'll get a little more. A little bigger. More. A little bigger. You can kind of see, see the imagery. So like I said, uh, we're going to try to put in an email, the email that goes out to all our members, um, some sources. The sources. We're going to make these available. You can actually get to these, the images we found online. Proceeding on. The last saint for this week, saints for this week, is John and Paul. Uh, They were soldiers that were martyred. They refused to honor the Roman gods, and they were beheaded. Um, Found a few images of them. Some saints are really Mm -hmm. hard to find images for, but here they are. They're the... They're... Right. There's the idol. They presented with the idol. And I said, no, No, thank you. not. That, okay, that is where it is proper to say, I will not serve. Yes, I will not serve idols. Yep. And then here, here is the, the coloring page that we have. Now, you, you, we don't have this, the, original, the, you know, the original source for this as well. But Well, part of the reason why is because some of the source images, that we chose them because of the composition, but the quality was really bad because it was like really low resolution. Or mm. like on this one, the styling wasn't our favorite as far as like the faces um so we had to do some work on it but it we thought that this was the best one as far as for a coloring page um Mm. and so that's why i I just just have have this good good well that brings us to the end of our slides over this week yep we had quite a bit we had quite a bit to go over so well i think we can go ahead and wrap this up now Give us some feedback. We made it through, even with all the yeah. interruptions. <laughs> well, every week is, you know, every, every week's a little adventure. Yeah. But so give us some feedback as to um, if you find, you know, continue to find these use, these videos helpful, or if you think a, a better, a better uh, way of presenting, you know, the things that we're talking about might be better. But, and also, we're still we're we really are still early on, you know, in this project. This project is going to take a long time. And so we're iterating and, and wanting to improve. And, of course, the calendar. Yeah, don't worry about the fly. The calendar, that's kind of the centerpiece for now. But God willing, we'll be at this for years. And uh, five years from now, hopefully, what we're, what we're making will be quite a bit you know, better than, than what we have. So <laughs> we're bumbling through a little bit right now. But, um, well, God bless all you guys. And uh, we will see you again soon.